By now, many Russians are scrambling to leave their country amid fears that the nation's borders may soon be closed off. New satellite images show a line of traffic that spans nearly 10 miles as people wait to cross into the neighboring country of Georgia. This is state media report the Kremlin could ban military-aged men from leaving the country as soon as today. The rush to call up new troops is splitting families apart. Seen up, obtained video of a groom forced to say goodbye to his new wife just before joining the military there, right after their wedding. Joining me now is Bill Browder. He's the CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, formerly Russia's largest foreign investor. Bill, good to have you on today. Great to be here. Bill, you've been uh, a long time president in Russia, observer of it, uh, contact and, and disputes with, with senior officials in Russia. We are seeing people fleeing the country uh, by the carload, right? Miles long lines. We're seeing some protests in the country and we're even seeing some officials begin to have public criticism of the mobilization and even the Russian leadership. Is the opposition to Putin today stronger, more credible than that we've seen in the past? It, it for sure is. I mean, the, the, the idea, and Putin has effectively crossed the Rubicon, the, the idea of, of um, s sending um, men between the ages of 18 and 60 to be cannon fodder and dying on the, uh, in the war in Ukraine is, is something that affects every single male in the country. And, uh, and that um, really does um, uh, bring it home that, that um, this is no longer a, a theoretical issue, that Vladimir Putin's um, decisions and his bad decisions are affecting everyone's life profoundly. Okay, so, so more credible, but more of a threat, a genuine threat to Putin's leadership, or can he uh, put this down? Well, Putin is a very effective dictator. He has um, put down many other uprisings and discontent in the past. Um, there were times when hundreds of thousands of people were marching through the streets of Moscow, and um, he figured out a way of, of uh, effectively terrorizing his own citizens by taking a small number of them, putting them in jail for 10 years, and, and sending a message to everybody else that this will happen to you. Now, in this particular case, um, uh, there is more visceral anger because people are all afraid of dying on the front. Having said that, Putin is a good dictator. He's very good at, at, at repressing people. Um, he's very good at scaring people. And um, he will use the uh, entirety of his repression machine to go after people. And my bet is that he succeeds. He's, uh, there, we, we've seen it in other countries. We've seen it in Iran. We've seen yeah. it in North Korea that a dictator can, can stay in power for a very long time. And so um, I wouldn't be betting against Putin right now in spite of these images. We're seeing an alarming series of threats in public by senior Russian officials right up to the president of the use of nuclear weapons. Dmitry Medvedev, the latest, to say that Russia would use nuclear weapons to, quote, protect the existence of our state. This is happening as those areas in the eastern part of the country are going to have sham elections to make them, in effect, part of the Russian state. Are Russian leaders laying the groundwork to justify the use of nuclear weapons? Well, and what they're doing right now is, is um, uh, you know, digging into our biggest fears and, and worries by um, using the N-word to use to talk about nuclear weapons is something that nobody has done before. And so they have now put it on the table. But but before we start capitulating and, and folding and getting scared away, we should just think for a second about what, what, it, what would actually happen if they did use a nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. First thing that would happen is that the... Um, the wind blows from from west to east, and so the fallout would would go over Russia. Um, the second thing that would happen is that Putin would lose the entire support of all the non-aligned countries, the Indias, China, South Africa's, etc. Uh, and third, it's not clear that he would actually uh, f further his uh, military goals. He wouldn't end up with Ukraine by killing a million people. He would just end up in a totally desperate, isolated situation, and so. I think that right now there's a there's a lot of of escalation that's going to happen between where we are today and and all these terrible threats that they're making. The the trouble is that 
he's already in an isolated, uh, weakened space, is, is he not? And you, by the way, credit due to you that, that you said early on that, that Ukraine would push back and push back hard, and they've proven to do so. And, and you can make a pretty strong argument that Putin has lost this war strategically, at least, at least to this point. In your view, has he lost? And, and would he accept loss? He definitely wouldn't accept loss. The reason why he went into this war is because he was worried about his citizens rising up against him because of 22 years of stealing enormous amounts of money. He was basically, he had, he had created a, uh, a, an impossible situation. And so he did what most dictators do. He pulled into the dictator's playbook and created a foreign enemy to start a war because he wanted people to support him. And for a while, he had he had 85% popular support. Now he is losing the war. He looks weak. And so what is that what does he do in this situation? Yeah. He's got to throw everything else he's got at it, which is why he has drafted somewhere between 300,000 and a million able-bodied men to show up at the front. Uh, he's got a lot of money. He's buying equipment from Iran and North Korea and and he will throw everything he has at this because there's no way that he can show weakness because if he shows weakness to the Russian people, mm. then they will get rid of him. And if they get rid of him, he dies. That's that's mm. his calculus. Yeah. It's an alarming forecast. Bill Browder, uh, always good to draw on your experience. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, Jim, that was fascinating. I mean, given Bill's uh, experience, shall we say, with the Putin yeah. regime. What, were you surprised? I mean, his comment also about the blowback from mm. uh, any potential use of a nuclear weapon by Russia was yeah. interesting to me and one I hadn't heard many make. It's interesting. I mean, and that's the that's the dissonance there, right? That that even Putin knows the blowback would be significant, including from his alleged partners like a China. On the mm -hmm. flip side, as Browder says, and, and this is the view, frankly, of loads of folks in, in the U.S. intel community, for instance, that Putin cannot lose because if he loses this war, yeah. then effectively he loses respect and power. So how do the what wins out there, right? Some desperate act by him or eventually seeing the light. Uh, and it's yeah. it's a it's a it's a tough bet, right? Either way.